Ladies and gentlemen, it is my big pleasure now to present to you Mr. David Hakenas, the Product Manager Autonomous for Komatsu. He is going to talk to you about the evolution of autonomous mine site solutions, how to prepare, how to advance, and what the future holds. Thanks so much. Hey guys, how are you today? I just do need to point out, I am also a millennial. <laughs> There were a lot less laughs on that than I thought there would be. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys today about autonomous and the future. So, oh, I guess I have to figure out how this thing works. There we go, the road to autonomy. Um, technology, preparation, and operational excellence. So every mine that we know of is looking at automation today, right? Whether that's plant automation, OT automation, or autonomous haulage, like we're working on, right? So I wanted to start out, where is the industry today? Where are we today? And some of that starts in our history. Um, what are the degrees of autonomy that we're looking at, and how do we get to full automation, right? I'm sure we'd all love to live in the world where we can upload our mine plan to a piece of equipment and have it go wander off and do that for us. That's, a, that's an ideal world. Um, but how do we get there? And what stands in our way between where we are today and where we'd like to be. Um, so in our history, 1980, Modular Mining created the first computerized dispatch fleet management system. 10 years later, Komatsu started developing autonomous. So if you're a follower of technology, you own a Tesla car, um, you see the hype on Twitter, um, if any of you guys tweet. Um, we started doing this in 1990. And then, for any of you that are counting, I was four. <laughs> um, in 1998, we did our first development field trial, and in 2007, we did our first commercial deployment in Chile, um, which means we have 12 years of active commercial experience in autonomous. We have 200 trucks. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. we are the market leader in autonomous. 2.3 billion tons moved over 12 years with zero lost time injuries or accidents. So when we did the panel yesterday morning, um, one of the gentlemen on the panel mentioned, how do we lead with safety, right? If we're looking first at commercial viability and second at safety, why can't we be looking at safety and commercial viability as the same milestone? And that's one of the goals that Komatsu is trying to achieve with Autonomous, and that we're looking to you guys as OEMs and as mine operators to help guide us into the future of both safety and automation. So let's talk a little bit about degrees of autonomy. So manual operation, everybody I'm sure is familiar with that. And the first step here, assistive automation. Just about every mine that I have ever been to has hit the assistive automation milestone, right? How many of you guys are mine operators and have a fleet management system? Show of hands. Do any of you not have a fleet management system? Exactly, right? So assistive automation is the benchmark for today's technology. That might be a fleet management system. That might be high precision guidance, right? That might be equipment health. Um, in the age of big data, equipment health is king, right? How can we prevent a breakdown? How can we get that truck into the maintenance shop before that turbo goes belly up? Um, beyond that is partial automation, right? We're talking about collision awareness systems, safety intervention, and limited autonomous functions. Um, how do we have machines that assist people in operating them more efficiently, safer. Um, beyond that, we have conditional automation, right? I'm sure some of you guys have seen auto drill features um, or semi-autonomous dozers, right? Your operators can focus on driving the equipment and the equipment can focus on executing the mind to plan, right? Blade control on a dozer or a grader. Um, and then where we are today is what we would call highly automated, right? Our autonomous haulage system um, generally works without intervention, but as our opening statement yesterday alluded to, people are still 
and remain, even in a highly automated environment, the most important part of the mine. Um, even in autonomous haulage, your people are what drive your production. We can pull people out of the driver's seat, we can pull people out of unsafe situations, we can put them in other roles where there's less risk involved in their day-to-day -day tasks, but your people are still your most important asset. And where do we wanna be? Full automation, right? We would love to live in a world where the equipment can do its thing and our people can do their thing and that they can be safe and they can be enablers of production. So how do we get there, right? What are our key drivers for autonomous? So right now there are very few operators worldwide running autonomous haulage um, because these key drivers have to be true, right? Autonomous isn't for everybody today, right? Your cost profile of manpower must be sufficiently high that there's a return on investment for your operation, right? So we're talking places like the Pilbara, the Atacama Desert, Fort McMurray, if you've ever been there, um, where the, your cost of manpower, but not just your personnel cost, but your support cost, right? If you're operating a mine in the Atacama Desert, you're bringing in food, you're bringing in water, toiletries, right? Personnel support. High employee turnover is a big thing that our industry is facing today, right? Employee retention is at an all-time low Career activity is at an all-time low. You don't meet people my age that go to work for a company and want to know what the pension plan is. And some of that gets back to the instant gratification that we were talking about in the previous session. Um, but what are the infrastructure requirements? What are your operating expenses? What are your productivity targets? But more importantly, what are your safety incidents, right? How can you operate safer? And what are the key enablers to these? What are our new technologies that we're bringing in from other industries, right? We're learning great things from automotive. There's a lot of standards-based activity that's happening today. Um, machine learning is finally coming into its own in a way that can be valuable. And I wanna talk a little bit about that. Um, new personnel and skills acquisition. Um, as we bring in new employees, are they skilled employees? What does your labor force look like? Um, are you in a place where you can draw off of a community with a skilled labor force, or do you struggle to find people like all the rest of us do? Um, is the regulatory and political environment at your operation conducive to autonomous? It's not always. Um, autonomous is new. Automation is new in the relative history of mining, we're at the very, very end of it. Um, and how can standards-based interoperability drive us into that future that we wanna live in? So, segueing into that, I'm sure all of you guys have heard that Caterpillar can automate a Komatsu truck. I mean, they put it all over the news. Um, what they did there was they reverse engineered our CAN controllers, our drive controllers, transmission controllers in a very non-sustainable and debatably non-safe way. So in a response, three weeks ago, Komatsu presented to the ISO TC82 plenary committee in Stockholm and were accepted to form a working group to create OEM interoperability between autonomous supervisory systems and equipment. And I wanna talk a moment about why we did that. One, because we believe that it's the safe path. But two, because as an OEM, we feel it's our responsibility, if autonomous is going to be the future of mining, how can we lower the barrier of entry to enable more mines to automate? Um, it was funny, I was having a conversation yesterday in the hypothetical. Dear Mr. Customer, please buy all Komatsu trucks or all Caterpillar trucks just because you'd like to automate your fleet. I'm sure you're all good for a check on, on Friday, right? <laughs> Doing this allows customers, mine operators, construction companies to come as they are with the fleets that they have. And we believe that this is the first major barrier between where we are today 
and where we're going to be five years from now is machine oper interoperability. Everyone also always asks, what about the fleet management piece, right? What's this top one, 27, or 23, 7, 25? Um, that's an up and coming ISO standard that we're working through, um, but we believe that there is far greater value in the machine interface um, for several reasons, and the first of which some of our friends at FMI pointed out yesterday, it is regulatory compliance. So right now, automation and mine automation is operating in a space with very little regulatory compliance, and we don't believe that that's gonna be true for much longer, right? What government regulator is going to let you run a fleet of trucks with hacked CAN controllers? Probably none. So we believe that this is key to driving the future of automation. Um, so further down that road, how can we adhere to standards to better integrate into a mines business systems. So if any of you are familiar with the history of how autonomous has been deployed on both sides of the yellow fence, it has been in exactly one way, right? We proof of concept it this way with this hardware as an end-to-end -end solution that's essentially a sandbox or a black box to your business. It runs over there, separate from your business systems, and uh, we sneaker net the data on a thumb drive. Um, how can we adhere to industry standards, IEEE standards, um, other standards that customers expect to integrate autonomous into a mine operator's business systems, right? So the black box on the left there is where we were in 2018. Um, we released specifications-based LTE operation. No more will we tell a mine operator what vendor, brand, of LTE they need to use because we tested it. Um, we adhere to the ISO LTE standards for common air interface, um, and, the ven and the mine operator is free to choose an LTE system that integrates best into their business. Moving forward into this year, we've released shared Wi-Fi modems that allows convergence of IntelliMine products um, on the truck itself. Um, with LTE modems that allow third-party products. Um, due to some technical stuff on Wi-Fi, um, they're slightly different. But we've also, this month, are releasing a server and specification-based, server and storage specification-based, right? Nobody wants to buy our servers. We're a truck company. We're not a server company. I guarantee you there's not two tables in this room that have exactly the same server and storage setups. So we're working on integrating our systems into our customers' businesses to drive automation to the next step. Looking forward, we're changing our network traffic to adhere to IEEE standards, and we're looking forward into 5G networks and other enabling technologies that can drive the future of automation. Um, simultaneously, we're working on reducing our bandwidth requirements, making the products more efficient on the network, um, to allow higher degrees of automation to occur in the field. So what does a mine need to do to prepare? And I know you guys all probably did a safety share first thing this morning, but I'm gonna start with a little proof of concept safety share. I wanna board that truck. And as a miner, I'm going to make positive contact with the driver that doesn't exist. And that's the first point of what a mine needs to do to prepare. You need to be thinking of a safety first culture because as you start to deal with highly automated environments, the things that have been ingrained in us as miners sometimes no longer apply. And if your employee's first thought isn't how do I achieve this safely in an environment that's different than the environment that I'm used to? You're not primed for success. And I think that that's the first and most important lesson in any automation track, is to be a safety first enterprise. Um, because it will be different. The lessons will be different. Your field level risk assessments will be different. Um, determine readiness deploy, and then we'll talk more about technology, mindset, and culture. Um, the most important part is still start with your mind plan. Uh, automation will drive the truck. It will drive it efficiently. 
if you put it on top of an effective fleet management system, you can optimize production. But autonomous won't fix your problems. It will help you find them faster. <laughs> the luck that you have with human operators is that most of those guys that have been driving truck for 20 years have very good judgment, right? If you've lasted 20 years in the industry, you have the experience and the judgment to intervene when there are gaps in process, to understand what the desired outcomes are that come down from your board members, right? What are your desired outcomes? What are your production targets? You take that human out of the driver's seat and your process or your mind plan has a gap that's been band-aided by human judgment from good employees, they're not gonna be there to save you from it anymore. So the joke that I always peddle is, is that autonomous will help you find your problems faster. <laughs> um, so how do we overcome that, right? The first one we always talked about, safety focus, motivation, drive for success. The next and most important are relationship factors, right? When you automate, do you trust your automation partner? Do you have transparency and are your objectives mutually aligned? Um, you don't wanna end up on a 15 year journey in autonomous haulage or autonomous drills or assisted operations and loading with a partner that you don't trust. So when you're researching autonomous, look beyond the equipment and the technology into trust and transparency with your automation partners. And then if you can overcome those first two goals, then let's look at your ROI. Let's look at your economic factors, right? Where is your commercial tipping point? But if you can't get past the first two, the commercial stuff doesn't make sense. And so, from a customer preparation standpoint, you should be asking yourselves, you know, is our business culturally and ready for autonomous? Are our OEM relationships trusting? Are they transparent? Are we prepared to walk down that road that's gonna fundamentally change the way that we operate? Here's some nice filler. Right? How do we deploy autonomous? I'm sure you're all very, very, very familiar, right? Business inquiry, discovery, feasibility study, proposal, contract deployment support. And what does this have to do with preparation and execution? Only to show this is an 18 to 24 month process to get six trucks running. So when we talk about trust and transparency in autonomous, right? Do, does your future roadmap, does your digital operations roadmap align with your OEM, right? Are you guys headed down that same path? Because 24 months from now, we sure hope that you still agree. It's a long process and you should select a vendor that supports you well. Um, and those relationship factors are very important. And then lastly, if you've deployed autonomous, how do you achieve operational excellence with all of the challenges and all of the differences um, in autonomous haulage and, and mine automation? How do you achieve and maintain operational excellence? And a lot of these things have been talked about already, right? Continuous improvement cycles, team communication channels. I guarantee you, if you run autonomous haulage, your IT, OT, digital delivery teams are gonna to talk to your short range mind planners and your shift supervisors more than they ever have in their entire lives. Because gone are the days when you can walk a shovel to the other side of the pit and get over there and go, oops, we forgot to call the radio shop. Can someone pull a repeater trailer over here? Because the trucks simply won't drive there without them. So it's important to create those continuous improvement cycles, to create those production feedback cycles into your teams to make sure that those preparations are made in advance of ads move changes, that you have change control processes that are both robust and flexible. And again, we're not talking about the academic change control process, right? We're talking about real change control in the field because seemingly small things could take down your entire operation, right? A misconfigured network switch, uh, slightly out of alignment antenna, 
Um, things that in the past have been minor annoyances have risk to your operation. We've seen customers with great success creating cross-functional teams. Um, get an OT or an IT representative present in the mine as part of the team to be the true owner of the change that needs to happen. So, you know, don't have your mind shifters calling OT to say, hey, next week we need coverage, right? Have him at your line-out meeting. Have him or her have true ownership over those changes that are going on in your mind to make sure that those needs are being met in real time. And lastly, staying ahead of break fix. Um, most of the minds that I've ever been to, and, and for your guys' reference, my history is in network engineering. Um, most of my history in mining is, oops, it's broken, right? Solar winds or whatever network performance monitor is being used at that particular site has told you that a comms trailer's down or a tower's down or something's on generator, right? How can we move ahead of those cycles and stay ahead of break fix is an answer that your guys' service delivery teams have to answer inside of your business. Um, but I wanted to come here today and point out some of the challenges that we've seen over the last 12 years in mine automation to educate how do mine operators bridge that gap into automation in the future. Um, and then obviously my last slide here before we open it up for a little QA. Um, I burned through that because I knew we were a little bit high on schedule. Um, Komatsu has a performance assurance program for autonomous haulage that does everything from mine planning to best practice, but it isn't anything that a customer probably couldn't do themselves. But we will do an ROI planning, and we can simulate an entire mine environment, and we can say, look, on your mine plan, if you widen this road a quarter of a meter, we can keep the truck's safety and envelopes far enough apart that we won't get passing speed reduction, right? Everybody's new at Autonomous, we can help you operate it. System development, optimization, best practices. So there's my shameless marketing plug. Um, do any of you guys have questions? Great. Well, we'll be around the rest of the day. The Komatsu booth is just out here if any of you guys want to talk about automation journeys or just technology in general. And thanks for your time, guys. Have a great day.